This video is one of a series. The full series provides the complete October 26, 2016 forum involving seven of the eight candidates competing in the November 8, 2016 election for three seats on the seven-member Bergen County Board of Chosen Freeholders, the county's legislative body. The forum was hosted by Bergen Grassroots, a nonpartisan, nonprofit corporation focused on keeping county residents informed about the activities of Bergen's governmental entities. Its website and this forum series are at www.bergengrassroots.org. Thank you. Now we're gonna we've got we're gonna take this the next 15 minutes, which means you're gonna get out of here about seven minutes late, and uh, and give everybody a two-minute period to think about an answer that would actually elaborate on something you have already said tonight or done tonight. For example, if you voted uh, that the CSX uh, uh, per, uh, uh, prevention issue was sufficiently clear, um, you might want to elaborate on, on what, whether or not, on how you, how you voted on that. So it could be one of your eight questions, or it could be something that somebody said that you'd like to take a shot back at. I rather suspect that that might be what you, will, what you will do with this last two minutes. But this last two minutes gives you a chance to clarify sort of where you've been tonight and make that sort of final appeal to your, your potential vote. Yeah, we're going to start with, uh, with Freeholder Sullivan. Two minutes to clarify and make the final pitch. Thank you. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for having this forum for us to hash out some issues. First, I just want to say if I'm re-elected, re I promise to continue to serve the people of Bergen County with integrity, integrity and I strive to tackle issues of our, of our county's pressing needs. Obviously, some of the things that came out tonight, we need to clarify. CSX, we said yes. We need to get more information. We need to make sure the information is given to our first responders. We need to make sure that we're aware of what's going on and what's on our railroad track. So our first responders are not in danger. We also need to understand how the budget works. I think we explained it a little bit. I don't know what kind of math we have over here, but if you have a $20 million budget, you cut $5 million, it's 25%. So you cut 20 that's a ton of money to cut from college. Listen, my, my, I'm clear on these things. We need to continue to make sure we have the resources for the people that need it the most. Okay, we also need to talk about transportation that didn't come up tonight. The light rail in Bergen County is going to be such a vital, vital issue for our county. As I stated numerous times, we need to learn how to move people not just in and out of the county, but around the county. But the choice, to me, is clear. We do not want to go back to these cuts that hurt individuals. We need a responsible budget. And you will see in the upcoming years the work that, the work that was done in the last two years is going to be phenomenal for this county going forward. We have our things in a row. We cannot go back to cutting education. We cannot go back to cutting veteran services. Veteran services by 50%. We can't go back and cut that. We need to continue to strive and move forward. We need to invest in our county like we have been doing. And we need to make sure we give the taxpayer the best bang for their buck. Because, and that's what we do up there as a budget. And it was proven by the way we did the budget. We sat down in a bipartisan way. We went through the budget line by line. We came up with answers. We came up with some solutions. And it was done bipartisan. Now, we may not have had one person vote for it. But it, it is obviously clear last year when Ms. Nicola voted for the budget. And the $5 million was reinstated to Bergen Community College. She voted. So obviously she's made a mistake in the past. What I'm saying is we can't trust her with the budget anymore. We need to continue to go forward with the budget we have, with the budget, with the way we do the budget, and give the residents of Bergen County what they deserve. Thank you. Mr. Rorman. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You know where I am on issues. I'm not big on spending money. I'm tired of being taxed to death. I, I give some credit to the, the Democrats here. They're telling you that they're going to raise your taxes and they're going to do it. Right. Republicans, they're going to give you a bunch of like small land and things over. We'll, we'll do, give you a break for your taxes and it doesn't materialize. To me, 
I don't see any difference between a Democrat and Republican. If you want change in this county, and we've had Democrat, Republican control bouncing back and forth in this county for 150 years. If you're in this room, you're probably angry enough where you want some change. You're not going to get it overnight if you elect more Democrats and more Republicans. You're going to have to be brave enough to vote third party. If you want to see taxes go down, I'm proposing drastic changes. Because I see that's the only way to really bring taxes under control. I will never vote for a budget this year, if you elect me, that's uh, not decreased by at least 10% of last year. I'd like to see that if you let me, for every, th every three years that I'm on, I will decrease every 10% 10, 10 every year. Mind you, I am just going to be, if you do elect me, I will just be one of 70. I'm going to have to work with these people. I have to be a little pragmatic when it comes to things. I'm not a dictator. I can't just walk in there and say, hey, you know, we're going to sell this and do that. It doesn't work that way. You have to work with these people. It's going to be a give and take if you let me. Thank you. Ms. Ortiz. There are many important issues facing Vernon County families. As someone deeply involved in education, as a trustee at Vernon Community College, and with a high school senior daughter going to college, one of my main goals as a freeholder will be to fight for the affordability of education and job training programs. In regards to what the, they mentioned earlier that it was only a 5% cut, that was the first year. It was a three-year process in which tuition was raised, and it was tuition and fees, which are broken up, so you give all your facts, but it was a three-year process, and, I, and we used to have board meetings with hundreds, hundreds of, of students, all their complaining and telling us all their problems. So yes, I sat through it and I saw it, so I disagree with you. As a daughter of immigrant parents, diversity is extremely important to me. Our county is a patchwork of race, cultures, lifestyles, and religions. We as freeholders have the responsibility to represent the county as a whole through the county boards, community outreach, and just simply listening to the residents of Bergen County. I was surprised that freeholder Nicola answered yes to this when you were the one that voted me off the board in 2012. The only Latina that was on that board. Fiscal responsibility is a must, and my experience as a financial analyst for 23 years means I can provide meaningful line-by-line -line input for the county budget. I am committed to the future. I'm committed to the improvement of our communities. I'm committed to you. Thank you for listening. We hope to have your support on election. Mr. Driscoll. Okay. Um, I said no to the pay-to-play in ordinance and its enforcement. Uh, in 2011, I created a committee to study pay-to-play reform, and we came up with something, and we lost control of the county, and it got gutted. It kind of enabled the unions to get back in play in the county, in donating, and that's basically why I said no to reservation. Um, in regards to the park study, um, this was also happening in 2010. They went to Rutgers to do the same type of study. We got a great parks department. We went on, the county went on a nationwide search for this parks director. I think he's qualified to come up with a plan for the future of the parks. And if he's not, well then I guess somebody dropped the ball when they appointed him to the position. Um, in regards to appointing uh, members of the trustee board, I'm a, I agree with diversity. Um, but we, as freeholders, only vote on the, the people that are given to us by the county executive. And that's how it works. In my first year on the board, Freel Hermison and myself um, pushed to have resumes attached to a, all, app, all people being appointed to boards and commissions, so we got an idea of who these people were being appointed. Some of those resumes are pretty, pretty interesting. What committee they belong to, what town democratic committee they belong to. So, you know, that's, well, that's part of it, I guess. Um, this county is beautiful. I grew up here. My, my children are going to be raised here, and I'm not planning on moving anytime soon. This, we need to do a lot better to make services for the people of this county improve. Uh, we, I, when I got up on the board in 2009, I made it clear I'll be the voice for those that don't have a voice. And I got a loud enough mouth to use it, I plan on using it to be, my, be the voice for the seniors and the disabled people of Burton County, as I have in the past. I was on the other end of the phone when it rang at 11 o'clock at night. When one of our police, officers, when they had a shooting down in Garfield um, about a gentleman who broke out of the Garfield police station, um, telling, letting me know that 
our officers discharged their weapons and I just want to make sure they were okay. That would, that's what it came down to. And that's why when you do this job, when you come up this job, it's a 24-7 job. And anybody thinks that they're going to be here part-time is just kidding themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DeDeo. Uh, just to clarify the record, BS is baloney and salami. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Jefferson said, public debt is our greatest danger to be feared. We have an $82 million debt payment in Bergen County with interest. We need to take back Bergen County so that people can live here and it's affordable for all. We spoke about the hospitals, we spoke about the parks, we spoke about the schools. There's no one up here who has qualifications, degrees, and certification in all those areas. With regard to the hospitals, I consulted, as I mentioned with you before, with Bergen Regional Medical Center, saving thousands of dollars. With regard to our parks, I'm a former environmental commissioner and served on the environmental board for over 10 years. With regard to our schools, I hold a superintendent of school license, taught college, have a bachelor's and master's and a PD in, in school administration. I urge you, each and every one of you, because you are the concerned citizens because you're here tonight, go on Google, Google Bergen County Freeholder, vote 411, their voter's guide. It's an independent guide which has all of us there. Look at the background, look at the levels of education, look at the levels of experience. This is what we need for Bergen County. I thank you for your support, and more importantly, I thank you for coming here tonight. Priority Nicola. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Um, first, I would like to uh, answer the, the trustee claim. I, I did vote for two new trustees on the uh, community college board. I voted for a school superintendent and a professional with disabilities. And I did vote for Ms. Ortiz when her nomination came up last year. Um, I also want to uh, talk about insurance, saying that the last administration didn't disclose an increase in, an exorbitant increase in, in insurance for employees. That's untrue. The last insurance broker prepared a report. What happened was uh, there was a new contract with a new broker who started from zero again. And then they discovered what was going to happen. This is what happens when administrations turn over and professionals turn over and contracts change. Veteran services. Services were never cut to veterans. Yes, they were, uh, uh, the number of employees was um, decreased in that department as the number of employees was decreased in a number of departments. I've been veteran services for six years. I have a son who's a Navy pilot for seven years and his wife for five years, and no one on the Freeholder Board has been a bigger champion for veterans. Pay to play. Why I said with reservations for pay to play is because it's not strong enough. It was gutted when the Democrats became the majority on the freeholder board. Pay to play has to be eliminated. We also need to have a penalty for false certifications because it has happened and it does happen. DPW, the reason why that project is uh, increased is because there were a number of add-ons including a second story to that building. Um, there are still other things I wanted to mention when we talk about shared services and we're talking about insurance and the, the cost of uh, uh, going up for our employees. That's something we really need to explore with municipalities as well. Um, and Bergen uh, Regional Medical Center. It's so important, this is really a triad. We as a freeholder board have to protect not only the taxpayers in this uh, contract, but also the clients, the users, who are those who are most in need. But with the new proposal, other insurances will be accepted, so hopefully it will be more citizens and the employees, because safety is an issue over there, 
There is so much, and I know I have so many other responses I'd like to get in, but the red card is in the air. Thank you, everyone. Yes, okay. Um, first of all, I really am the outsider in this. I, I, I've been on the council in Mawa for only two years. So this pay to play, as I see it, it was not gutted. It's pretty damn tough. You can't contribute more than $300 to a county candidate if you are a county vendor. I think that's pretty restrictive. Also, the park study. Bergen County has hired a premier park consultant out of Rutgers University, our own state to do a 20-year park master plan. You know how much development we've had in Bergen County over the last 20 years. We need a real expert for the next 20 years to make sure we don't lose our open space. OK, those are my two little asides. I am running to contribute to the future of Bergen County, a place where I grew up, worked as a journalist, and raised my family. The choice is clear. Republicans may talk the talk, but they walked away from high school and college students special services kids, seniors, veterans, and consumers when they slashed budgets. We Democrats had to restore those crucial services. Republicans may talk the talk about Bergen Regional Medical Center, but they never even met in that committee created by Kathy Donovan to evaluate the future of Bergen Regional. We Democrats had to put together the advisory committee, get the supervisory hospital authority through the legislature, and solicit bids for a new operator. Republicans may talk the talk about a favorite subject of mine, the Pilgrim Pipeline, which we in Mawa desperately oppose. They, they, those Republicans, they're trying to resonate, resonate with Bergen County residents who are scared to death about oily toxins in their water and sludge in their soil. But in 2011, Freeholders Driscoll and Dina Cola voted for a resolution to remove land from Green Acres to allow for construction of the Tennessee Pipeline. They voted to support the application they voted to cut down trees in Ramapo Reservation. The Republicans like to hear themselves talk, but you can't trust them to do the right thing for our vulnerable citizens, our vulnerable earth, our vulnerable water. I and my running mates pledge to listen to our citizens, most importantly, to connect you with county services and do the right thing. We will walk the walk with you, and together we will keep that good momentum going. Thank you. What I'd like to do uh, just before I, uh, I want to have a, a round of applause. Let me just say a couple of things. Uh, I go to uh, freeholder meetings, almost all of them, because they are by no means boring. We only saw a tip of the iceberg tonight. One of the things that I spent a lot of time this week on is talking to mental health and, and addiction uh, advocates and, and, uh, and uh, counselors talking about how the role of Bergen Regional in a larger so ecosystem of mental health protection, for example. We didn't touch on any of that tonight, but that is actually part of the process that the, that the freeholder board has to engage on. And not having many other people beside myself showing up at those meetings helps not sort of allow those issues to be sort of played out. And I think, in fact, if you are on the verge now of having simultaneous um, uh, uh, video transmission, it will make a huge difference in, in, in that process. This is a very interesting and very important election. You are talking about half a billion dollars that these folks will decide about. I am very, very much appreciative of all of you coming out tonight, but I think we owe we all these folks a real round of a hand. Up. And tomorrow night, there are three officers, constitutional officers, the sheriff, the clerk, and the surrogate, who will be talking to us about why either the Republican or the Democrat, the libertarians in this case, um, ought to be elected to those important posts. And we hope you'll join us again tomorrow night. Thank you very much.